and welcome to I Talk to Ghosts. I'm your spirited host, Jennifer, a professional medium and a teller of ghost stories. This evening's episode, dear guest, is going to be a little bit different than usual. As you are listening to this, I'm actually on location in Canada as part of a haunting investigation as their medium. I'm with the paranormal road trippers as we investigate a haunted inn in Powell River, British Columbia. If you're curious as to what we find, the documentary will be out at the end of May, and you can watch it on the Ghostly Activities YouTube channel soon. So tonight's episode is going to be a best of ghost stories from the podcast so far. I've put together my favorites and also ones that I've had the most responses to, and I put them together in a collection for you to enjoy while I'm off investigating ghosts of my own. Not to worry, though, next week's episode will be back to its regular spooky spiritual format. Until then, dim the lights, settle in, let's hear some ghost stories. Three years ago, I took a job offer and moved to London. I was sharing a two-story house with two couples and another girl. My room was the first one at the top of the stairs. One morning, I woke up at 5 a.m. It was the weekend and I remember thinking, "Ah, I don't have to get up yet. I know I was awake, no matter how much I try and convince myself otherwise now. I had a lock inside my room, which I always used. The area I moved to was a little run down, so I felt safer locking my bedroom door at night. So anyway, I woke up at 5 a.m. and I had my back to the bedroom door. I heard someone running up the stairs at full speed. And then I felt someone lean over me. It was like someone was leaning on me with all their weight, trying to get a peek at my face. I was terrified. I thought I had locked my bedroom door. And then I felt someone slowly pull the pillow from beneath me. Terrified, I turned around expecting to see someone. To my surprise, there was no one there. I got up to double check my door and it was locked. I asked my flatmates if anyone was awake at that time or if they had heard anything. They all said no. It took me a while to move on from that experience. I want to tell you about this strange experience I had while hunting with my father-in-law. It was well before sunup, maybe 5 a.m., and we hiked to a patch of trees and sat down. He was maybe 70 yards south of me, with me facing out into a clearing. He had a flashlight, and I didn't have one on me at the time. It was so dark, you couldn't see your own hand in front of your face. After about 20 minutes, I hear something really big walking maybe 10 yards in front of me. From the sound of the leaves and branches breaking, It sounded human size. It startled me, and I loudly called for my father-in-law to turn on the flashlight. Right in front of me, where the noise was coming from, I heard his voice say, Nah, it's cool. The noise happened again about ten minutes later, and I called out to him, assuming it was him making the noise. No response, so I made my way over to his camp and asked him if he had just walked near me. 
He swore he hadn't gotten up the whole time and was confused why I would have heard his voice. This is a story from my childhood that involves family members as well. My parents and older brother left the house that day to pick up some lamps they had ordered. My two older sisters were left in charge of me and the rest of my siblings. The weather was bad and getting progressively worse so we decided to go to the basement in case of a tornado. We camped out under a table for protection, but my little brother wouldn't get under the table and chose to mess around and play with anything he could find to entertain himself. He was young and always had a lot of energy. My older sisters, Debbie and Cheryl, were watching the storm out the back door. All of the sudden, Cheryl shut the door and locked it. And Debbie said, that won't stop it if it wanted in. They scrambled and tried to get under the table, but there wasn't enough room for more people. I thought it was a tornado. I held my baby sister close as she sat on my lap. Then, all of the sudden, it sounded like the furniture was being tossed around the room. It was like our house was being destroyed on the floor above us. Part of me worried for my safety, and part of me was freaking out because I didn't want us to get blamed for something while we were all in the basement. Some time had passed, and we heard walking around upstairs. My brother David went upstairs and said Dad and Mom and Gary were home. I was afraid of what I'd see. But everything was fine. I was so relieved. I let out the longest breath. But then, that's when Debbie and Cheryl told our parents what happened. Apparently, when they were looking out the door, they saw someone with long, dark hair walking in the storm. Concerned for her safety, one of them yelled, hey, which I hadn't heard. The person turned towards them and didn't have a face and started walking towards them. That's when Cheryl shut the door and locked it, and Debbie said that wouldn't stop it if it wanted in. Dad didn't believe them. But what got me was how it sounded like the house was being torn up, but nothing was wrong with it. I saw how scared they were, and I know that this is all true. Do you have a personal ghost story you would like to tell me? I may share it on the podcast. Email me at speaknow at italktoghosts.com. My friend and her brothers were staying the weekend at my house. Our brothers play competitive hockey together and had a game early the next morning. Being teenage girls, we like to sleep in late. My parents decided to leave us to sleep while they went to the game early the next morning. They told us the plan the night before. I was sound asleep when my friend woke me up. She shook my shoulder and whispered, Jess, Jess, wake up. There's someone in the house. Me being the lazy and sound sleeper that I am, just told her that it was probably my parents and fell back asleep. She finally shoved me to totally wake me up. Jess, listen! I sat there, still groggy from asleep, and listened. Bam! 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 Someone was definitely stomping up the stairs 
and hitting the walls as they came up. I wondered who it was when all of a sudden it stopped. Whatever it was turned around a few times in the hall as if deciding on where to go. Who is it? My friend whispered. I hadn't a clue and just shook my head scared to death. Then, as if whatever it was decided on what it was going to do, it took a long jump almost all the way down the hall, landing almost directly in front of my closed door. My friend jumped from her trundle bed to my day bed, landing on me. Quickly she joined me, shaking under the covers. Whatever it was, was a lot bigger than a person. We heard heavy breathing outside the door. I hoped that if it was a person, which by then I knew it wasn't, I could scare it off with some music maybe. I grabbed my remote control to my stereo. The second I grabbed the remote, the door handle shook as if it was locked and someone angrily wanted in. I accidentally dropped the remote and frantically tried to grab it. Just as I did, the door flung open, hitting the wall and leaving a ring where the door handle hit it. I didn't move from my position under the covers, huddled up with my friend. She was shaking and crying quietly. There was nothing there in the room. There was no form that we could see. But whatever it was stormed into the room, knocking some papers off the dresser, opening some drawers of markers and pictures, dumping them on the floor, and searched the unmade trundle bed where my friend had been. Then, it stormed out the door and disappeared. No more sounds or noises. The room was a mess, but still we didn't move. I clicked on the music about five minutes after it left, still under the blankets, now crying myself. I uncovered my head and glanced nervously around the room. It was gone. No trace of it. We stayed under the covers for a half hour, scared out of our wits. It didn't come back. I finally got out of bed and looked around the room. I quickly glanced down the hall with the lights on, of course. No footprints or holes in the walls. Some very dark pencil marks ran down the hall, like some child had been running down the hall with a pencil, marking it along the way. But they were much too high for a little child, and much too crooked for them to be done purposefully. I left the room the way it was. We got dressed and sat talking about it for a long time. Then my parents got home. I told them everything, both of us giving them exact stories. They just laughed and we got the blame for the mess and the pencil marks. My friend and I will be the only ones that know and totally believe that this happened. She doesn't like to talk about it. I grew up in a rural part of Ohio. My house had fairly dense woods located directly behind it. As a child, I had a passion for exploring. I especially loved exploring those woods. It was my favorite place to be. I had wandered through those woods many times, always with my mother's permission. There was one tree in particular that I frequently enjoyed climbing usually about the halfway mark so I could perch myself on one of the heavier branches and just relax as I listened to the peaceful sounds of nature. From that position, I could partially see the back of my house. On that day, after a fair amount of exploring, I carefully scaled my favorite tree. I seated myself on a sturdy branch and took in the view. Being late October, 
the sun inevitably began to set within a few minutes. I always felt a little sadness to see the darkness approaching. The woods were like my own little sanctuary. I could entertain myself out there for hours. When darkness began to fall, however, my mom would stand at the edge of the woods and call my name until I obediently returned home so as not to be stranded out there after dark. After watching the sunset until I could no longer see it, I began my descent down the tree. I was nearly at the bottom when I heard my mother's familiar voice calling my name. I thought nothing of it at first, as this routine had occurred plenty of times before. Then I realized something strange as my feet touched the ground. My mother's voice was coming from behind me, deeper in the woods, rather than towards the house where she always stood when she called me home. My mom had never entered those woods before, at least not with me. At first I was excited, eager to find her and show her all my favorite spots before it grew too dark. That's when I realized something was off. How could she have gone into the woods ahead of me? She continued calling my name, but there was something strange about it. She sounded frantic, then almost angry. Fearing that I was in trouble for reasons currently unknown, I froze in place. As her voice drew closer, I squinted my eyes to see if I could locate her and determine exactly how angry or upset she appeared to be. But I didn't see anyone there. Suddenly I heard her voice calling my name from the direction of my house, sounding much calmer and normal. Seconds later, her voice came from somewhere within the woods. It wasn't an echo. I wasn't imagining things. I was literally hearing her beckoning me from the edge of our backyard, as well as behind me. My legs turned to jelly. I couldn't comprehend what was going on. The voice I originally believed to be her yelled from close by. Come here, right now! I realized that whoever or whatever was mimicking my mother was drawing nearer. I didn't question which voice was actually my mother's. Terrified of what I would see if I stood there much longer, I turned around and I ran towards the exit of the woods as quickly as my legs could possibly carry me. It was amazing that I didn't trip over something in my haste. Even though my house wasn't far away from where I'd been standing, those woods had never seemed larger to me than they did at that moment. From behind me, my mother's voice continued to call my name, now sounding desperate. Pure panic set in as my actual mother finally came into view. In my frightened state, I absolutely refused to look back. As soon as I was out of the woods and in the backyard next to my mother, the other voice was suddenly gone. Rather than fading away, it seemed to stop the very moment I stepped foot into my backyard. I must have looked as frightened as I felt because my mother asked me what was wrong. I didn't say anything until we were safely inside the house and our doors were locked. I asked my mom if she had entered the woods that day. She told me that of course she hadn't. I hesitantly asked her if she had heard anyone else calling my name and yelling. The answer to that question was also no. Although I was still very much shaken up, I managed to explain everything that happened. My mother said I must have imagined it, that I was spending too much time out there by myself. The incident in those woods has stayed with me to this day. I can still hear that voice as clear as a bell. Whoever or whatever it was calling me sounded exactly like my mother, but I know it wasn't her. The voice also sounded strange in a way I can't fully explain. I didn't go back into the woods until I was older, and even then, I never stayed for very long. We've since moved out of that house, but my mother and I occasionally discuss what happened. 
She still claims that she never heard or saw anything unusual out there. But what happened in those woods continues to haunt me. So, I had a very strange thing occur late in the evening, on New Year's Eve. I had been out at a party, as is customary, and around 2.30 in the morning, a few friends and I were headed back to our town. We drove into the residential parking lot outside the condo complex I lived in, and parked. We hadn't even locked the car when a man comes stumbling up the road towards us. This road, for reference, runs through the parking area and down a hill to a few houses. I know pretty much all the people who live down that small hill. The man didn't really perturb me or my friends, so we took our time as we stood around and chatted. Then a minute later, A high school girl wearing no shoes or socks and just a short dress comes walking up the hill. At this point, I started wondering what kind of weird party was going on at one of my neighbor's houses. The girl walked through the main parking area without a word and then turned onto the main street and headed up that. At first, we assumed we shouldn't worry because, despite her lack of shoes, she was walking straight and seemed to know what she was doing. That's when things got strange. After she had disappeared from sight up the street, she came bolting back down as fast as she could, even in her shoeless state. When she reached my friends and I, she slowed down but looked very spooked. My friend asked her what had happened, and she stopped. Then, with horror-stricken eyes, she pointed up the main street. We all turned and looked, but there was nothing in our direct line of sight. One of my friends and I decided we'd go up the street to investigate what was scaring this girl so much. We made sure my other friend and the girl got in the car and locked it as they waited for us. We went up the main street and for five minutes, we saw nothing. Then we passed under the one street light on the upper portion of the street. This street light has a stubborn and nerve wracking tendency to turn off at night once you pass under it. To my dismay, it turned off leaving us in total darkness, save for the faint glow of a light at the end of someone's driveway. That's when we saw it. Something that looked like a naked person, but wasn't quite human, waddled down the street towards us. It moved as though it were half squatting, and because of this, its hands dragged along the ground as they hung limp at its sides. I couldn't make out its face, and my friend told me later that he couldn't either. It was also making a throaty, gurgling noise, as if it was almost choking on something. All we could do in that moment was turn and run as fast as we could back down the street. I ran straight inside my condo, and my friend ran to his car. In a moment, I could hear the car screeching out of the parking area. I locked the door, and didn't even bother to look outside to see if the thing was still coming down the street. Are you enjoying your ghostly visit? If so, please follow, like, comment, and share. 
The ghosts may be talkative, but they are lousy at marketing. So every click helps. Tell your friends and please leave a kind review so that others might join us. The spirits and I thank you. And with that, dear listener, we've reached the end of this episode of I Talk to Ghosts. I hope you've enjoyed this special spooky collection of ghost stories. Which one was your favorite? I would love to know. And make sure to join me here again next week, dear listener, for a regularly formatted spooky and spiritual episode. Until then, wherever you wander off to, this world or the next, just remember, come back and visit with me. Have a lovely evening and good night.